you know, I, I was telling someone that when I was a kid, you know, the excitement that you feel before you wake up in the morning for Christmas. Well, that's the excitement that I feel before I go to the, the men's knitting retreat. So. Christopher and welcome to the Cabin Boy Knits Woolcast. I just got back from the men's spring knitting retreat and had an amazing time. So I'm going to be spending most of this episode telling you what goes on at a men's spring knitting retreat and I'll focus on some of the highlights as well. So grab your favorite drink, sit back, and I'll tell you my story. A number of you have asked to see the inside of the cabin so I thought I'd show you the inside of the cabin today. Show you a little bit on the outside and then we'll go inside. So follow me. So you can see the first, this is really two cabins that were uh, built together. This is the first one. And on the side of it, you can see that's the, the big fireplace. Over here, I've got the, the wood shed. And there's not a lot of wood in it now because I was using a lot of it over the winter. So this summer, I'll have to start building it up again. So now you can really see the two cabins. Here's the first one, and then this is the second one. So they're they're perpendicular to one another. Um, they've also on, on there's a, there is a second floor, uh, and that's where the bedrooms are located. One thing that I found really interesting wh when they built this is when they were taking it apart, they were trying to figure out that they had to have a means of knowing which logs um, were on top of one another when they rebuilt it. So they've, they've marked all the logs, and I want to show you that. So if you look over here, you can see the, the coatings. So this is West 4, and then we've got West 5 and West, West 6, and it goes all the way up. And so that told them uh, which way the logs went and, and which order they were stacked in. And so this one was from Lanark County, uh, and this one was from Renfrew County. And Renfrew and Lanark are, are close to our nation capital, Ottawa. Uh, one other thing that's interesting about this is on the porch, it's always an area that the birds love. And so they love making nests. This nest, I've left this nest up. It's been up here for a couple of years. And then we've got another one over here. Um, used to have bats as well. Uh, the bats, the bats are actually great. Uh, because they eat the mosquitoes. So, but I haven't seen a lot of bats around lately. There's actually a, um, a fungus or a, a, a disease that's impacting a lot of the bats. But hopefully, uh, they were living up in, in, in that corner up there. So hopefully we'll see more of them. So come on in and I'll show you the inside. Oh, who's here? Zan, the welcoming party. So inside we've got, this is the foyer, and this is really where the two cabins uh, join each other. And um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go on this side firstly, but I did, you'll notice on the walls I've got uh, local artists all over, uh, I've got family photos. I just, it gives it a home feeling for me and, um, and, and, and a warm feeling as well. But before we go into the other room, I also want to show you just the in the backyard. The trees are starting to blossom, which is great. We're probably a couple weeks behind schedule, but the trees are, are starting to pop. And just beyond the trees, that's the forest, and that's where I get a lot of the uh, botanicals for, for my yarn dyeing. And I'm not sure if you can see over the pool area, um, just at the bottom. So, and the pool's open, actually. Um, and I think it's, it's, it's definitely gonna be ready for swimming next week because the temperatures are starting to warm up. So let's go into the living room. This is one of my favorite rooms because I do a lot of reading in here and a lot of knitting. And 
you'll notice the fireplace. The fireplace used to be open and it's absolutely beautiful when it's open. Um, however, the owners just um, prior to, to me taking over uh, put inserts in because they, this was a, a bed and breakfast and it's definitely more fuel efficient uh, or heat, heat, heat efficient. So, um, I mean, aesthetically it's not as, as pleasing, but it, it is energy efficient. So that's a good thing. And I love this painting. This is from a French um, painter from Quebec who studied in Paris and it's a weaver. It's a woman weaving. He's actually got a number of paintings in the um, in government buildings and in churches in uh, throughout Quebec. But I really love this. I, th I thought it, um, it it's great. It represents the room well. I've got a bunch of also antique antiques that fill the room. Uh, this is an antique Swift, and I actually use it all the time because there's a, there's a lot of Swifts out on the market. But this one, very basic. But it works. It, 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 it works so well. So I, I use that one all the time. In an earlier episode, I showed you a picture of the cabin. For those of you who haven't seen that episode, this is the cabin that we're standing in right now. And that was a sheep barn at one point. I'm not sure when this photo was taken, but the, the buildings um, date back to the 1850s, both buildings. Then I've got another photo over here. It's not a photo, but it's a, it's a picture of the Fathers of Confederation. And I've got an ancestor um, in this picture, um, Darcy McGee. He was actually the first politician in Canada to be assassinated. Uh, we've had two in, in the history of Canada. Pierre Laporte was the second. Uh, and then over here, we've got the Queen looking lovely in her earlier days. And then, so that's it. It's a, I, I love this room. It's comfortable. Um, it's great. I've got surrounded by yarn um, and, and some of the mementos that I like. This is actually uh, a, a beautiful piece as well. Rob Strauss made this. It's actually a scarf, but I, I like it um, laying out so I can see it all the time and it's not seasonal. I keep that out all year. So, and then we've got uh, another picture which is interesting this is not local uh, but it is from a, by a Canadian uh, and it's out west um, and and the artist usually paints in in watercolors so this is a very very unique piece so let's go on into the other room so we're going now from one cabin into the second cabin and this is really the dining area this is where a lot of the conversations happen and uh, we, this past weekend there were about 12 guys here and so we've got both harvest tables out. Um, yeah, it's, it's functional but also suits the place. Also notice I've got uh, snowshoes on the wall and they're, they're functional. I, I, I've only got a couple out right now because it's, the rest are put away for this season but uh, snowshoeing is one of the favorite, one of my favorite things that I like to do out here. Also got a scene of Quebec. Um, it's also, you know, somewhat folky, uh, but one of the, from an architectural perspective, one of my favorite buildings or designs, uh, houses is, is the uh, cottages that come from Quebec. Really, I, I love them. So that's a, this picture, you know, I really like this painting. It's, it r reminds me of and, and really it's the, the architecture in this house that does it for me. So we've got another fireplace here. This one also has an insert um, and it's used not as much as, as the other one. But one of the interesting things about this fireplace is it also has a, another um, area where you can bake bread. And so some of us have, uh, the, I know that the, the owners prior were using this a lot. I haven't used it as much, but it will t it's on my to-do list of, of when I have time I, to, to use that. Um, and you can put the wood underneath there as well. Actually, when I first moved in uh, and I was cleaning this place out, a, a spider, it, it, honestly, the spider was about that big and it crawled out of, of the area. It was, it, it was startling. I've never seen a spider that big. I didn't think we had them that big in Canada. Um, and then we've got just, um, you know, more antiques all the way around, just I think to, to suit the, suit the, and I'm trying to get them to be um, 
in, in the relatively the same time period. And over here we've got the, the kitchen area uh, where all the cooking happens. And, and that's about it. So I hope you enjoyed the tour through the cabin. Oh, I have one more area I just want to show you. I'm going to walk to the second floor. I'm not, we're actually not going to go up to the second floor, uh, but I will show you the stairs because I've got some stuff on the wall that I wanted to point out. Um, and it, you'll notice I used to have a lot more um, books on this floor, but I've moved all my book collection up to the, to the bedrooms. There's three bedrooms in, in, in the cabin. And in order to make this and, and support the second floor, the, the architect, uh, whose name is Shakespeare, actually took logs from um, a railway in, in Toronto and, and used those um, to help support the second floor. I've got family photos on here. Um, and then second this is, these are the stairs that lead up to the second floor. I hope you enjoyed the tour of the, of the cabins. So I've only been back about 24 hours uh, from the Men's Nadine Retreat and it's fresh, top of mind, so I wanted to share that with you. I've been asked by a number of people, especially women, what exactly goes on at a Men's Nadine Retreat? So I'll try to shed some light on it um, and, and tell you what goes on. Maybe not everything, uh, but definitely the most interesting parts. Here's the bag I got. Um, and just to step back a minute and talk about the, the Men's um, knitting retreat. This one is the men's spring knitting retreat. There are a number of men's knitting retreats all over the United States. And so I'd encourage you to go on and look on the website. I will post it um, at the bottom of this um, YouTube and um, you know, take a look and, and see where they are. I'm hosting one on August 1st to 4th and it's almost full. And they do fill up quickly. For example, on this one, the spring knitting retreat, uh, that one fills up immediately. Like you need to have your finger on the trigger when uh, Joe Wilcox gives us a, a advance notice on when it's going to be when registration goes live and there's so many guys that are sitting there I'm included in one of them as one of them and my fingers on the trigger ready to go because you need to register immediately if you want to get into the spring spring one. The spring one is the oldest one. I think it's been going for approximately 12 years and Guys keep going back and back and back. Um, I have been going for probably around eight years now. And um, I mentioned in earlier episodes, it was really, truly uh, had a huge impact on me and has helped um, shape my life um, since then. So uh, I, I absolutely love it. Every year brings a different perspective or a different element. This year, I would say, is probably one of my favorites. Um, every, I say that af after every every year, but truly, this one was was magical. I think it, part of the part of it was just the chemistry of, of everyone there. There was probably around 43. Uh, I think there's 43 people registered for for this event. It takes place in Easton, um, in Easton Mountain which is near Saratoga Springs, New York. Um, it's beautiful up in the mountains. It's absolutely gorgeous. And it's in a, looks like an old hotel um, with refurbished rooms. They have a sauna, a whirlpool, um, hiking trails all around, a beautiful sun porch, a great room um, with lots of light and, and the food's great as well. So, and they've got a pool. It was a little too chilly for the pool this time, uh, but I have gone swimming in the past. Anyway, it was, it was fantastic. It was, it's a, it's a great trip from my cabin. It's probably around five and a half hours. So that's not too bad. That's, it's, and, and one of the things that I've, I always feel is that it, it probably takes, feels longer than five and a half hours because I'm just so excited to get there. Uh, but coming home, it, ta it feels to me like it's 15 minutes because my head's still processing all of the, uh, all of the stuff that's happened over, over the four days. So typically um, the way they're structured is they, they're set up from Thursday to Sunday. And um, in this case, I think over the last few years, guys have been going earlier and earlier. Um, and so I had planned to go on Tuesday. However, I had something that held me up Tuesday evening and I'll get into that in, in a few minutes. Um, so I left on Wednesday and I'm still glad that I got there before it actually started because uh, the number of guys that are there beforehand seems to be growing and you really form relationships and um, you get to really know um, the, the other fellow knitters. Um, so it's, it, was, it was a fantastic experience. But I'll talk about the structure of it and, and how it's set up. So usually for each retreat you get a bag and it's personalized, personalized with um, your name on it. So 
mine's super fine, Christopher Walker. And, uh, and inside is an agenda. And so when we look at the agenda, Joe Wilcox is the primary organizer of this. Aaron helps some out as well. Um, and Aaron runs the, the, the fall retreat. But Joe is highly organized. Two things, a couple things that make this successful is one that Joe is incredibly organized. So everyone gets an individual agenda um, of the workshops that they're gonna be attending um, and just the schedule of dinner and, and other events, which is fantastic. And um, also he's great at communicating. So there's a lot of communication beforehand, which, which really helps as well. Um, I have my um, retreat, again, is August 1st to 4th. Um, Joe is helping me out a lot with it. Um, I don't think I could, I, I would have capacity to manage it without his help. So I great, greatly appreciate that. And those strengths that he has definitely helped make the mine um, successful. So thank you, Joe, to that. So with respect to the individual agendas, we get an individual agenda. Um, and, and what happens is, okay, so I, I was talking about the registration and how you have to get in and, and register, uh, register for quickly because it fills up. But then what happens is um, after everyone's registered and it's locked down, uh, Bill will ask for um, workshops to who wants to, who, what are we interested in? What is it that we want to learn? And um, so we'll give him topics, various topics, and then the attendees, um, he'll ask the attendees who wants to teach these workshops or who, who is available to teach these workshops. And just to give you a sense of the skill levels uh, that we have in, at, the, at the workshop, I mean, at the uh, retreat, we've got individuals who are just learning to knit. And then we've got the high end, uh, all the way to the, the far end are uh, individuals who have published books, um, who teach at Vogue Knitting Live, uh, who teach all over the world, so it's it's a huge, huge um, delta, and it's it, it's great because it really helps. Um, I wouldn't say mentoring, but it helps conversation. You, it, it's, these guys are so approachable that you, know, you can ask them anything, and and they're willing to help out. So um, it helps the the conversation as well um, during the retreat. So it's great, and we get to tap into to all of this knowledge. Um, so that so once they figure out what the workshops are going to be, they get the individuals who put their hand up to to lead it, and um, and then those are locked down. And then we get an email uh, from Joe telling us that um, registration is now open for the workshops. And then you have to get in if you want the workshop that uh, any particular workshop you need to get um, in quickly so that and register for it because they fill up quickly. I was I completely missed the the email this year. Um, and so I was late. So, um, yeah, I, I would have loved to have taken any of the workshops. There are so many great ones. Just to give you an example, there is weaving. Um, I took a weaving class two years ago from uh, Dave um, Sledeski, and it was fantastic. And it, it's definitely, um, I, I made a scarf, and you know, I get compliments on the scarf all the time. Uh, it's something that I'm proud of because it's. I did, didn't think that it was. I, I was so amazed at, at what it looked like when it was finished, um, and it was entirely due to Dave's um, guidance on that. Um, but that's. I can see at some point in my life I will definitely get a loom and, and go down that road. Uh, but I was definitely hooked on, on weaving. But I've been able to hold it at bay because um, I just don't have capacity to take that on right now. And there's so many other things I want to do with knitting. So there's weaving, um, there is double knitting. Alistair, king of double knitting, um, taught a class on, on double knitting and um, Franklin's class, um, knit to fit your pampered pet, I'll get into it in, in, in a minute. Um, there was a class on steaking, on pooling, on drop spindle. Like, so there's so many different, different topics to have. Um, last year there was one on basket weaving. So, you know, it's great. There's tons to choose from. So we've got the workshops. We also have a tour usually, and the tour could be anywhere from a um, yarn shop this year or a wool mill. Um, we've gone to a wool mill in the past years, and this time it was to a, a farm. And so we went to um, the... Where's the farm? Alpacas of Haven Hill. 
and I actually picked up some two skeins of yarn. That was a great trip. Um, we got to look at the alpacas, learn more about the alpacas, learn about felting, um, and then they had a shop as well. So I was able to pick up um, two really nice skeins of alpaca. And th these two uh, skeins of alpaca will come into the story later on. Um, but it was, it, was, it was a great trip and I thought they, they did a terrific job of having knowledgeable people there to tell us about alpacas and I didn't expect the felting workshop as well so uh, there was a lot packed in and then um, it, was, it, was, it was a very good trip so uh, kudos for, for, to Joe for setting that up. So we had that and then we also had a, I'm going to have to put my glasses on to read this one, but we had um, a trunk show and I don't remember having a trunk show in, in prior years. And the trunk show was great because um, it was from Ensign Brook Farm, um, which is a local farm. And Karen Kennedy um, was there to show her stuff. Um, and the thing that I got really excited about was that she's part of the Heritage Conservancy. I talked, talked about it in, in an earlier episode. Um, so I was really excited about that and excited to see the, the fiber that she had. And so this one is a Romney Merino blend. It's quite nice. It is a DK weight. Um, it's beautiful, They're really nice, undyed. I'm probably going to dye this. Um, so I'll be interested in, in seeing, I'm not sure what color yet, but I love it, it's, it's great. Also, I got a Merino skein, which I'm not gonna be dyeing this one. I love when I, uh, happen upon or see dark dark wool and this is this is absolutely beautiful and it really passes the squish test as well it's 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 really nice and it's a dk weight so these two are going to be um, working together in some capacity on a project that's that one And I also picked up some roving, and uh, this is CVM. Uh, so I was happy to get my hands on CVM because it's not readily available around here. Uh, so that was nice, and it's it, it's beautiful, really really nice. And then this is uh, Romney, um, and that's also it's also also quite nice as well. So, but the be real benefit for me was talking to to Karen. Karen is extremely knowledgeable. And she, I believe she was a shearer at some point, and she was also um, a grader as well. When you're able to access someone like that and the knowledge that they have, it's quite special. So I really enjoyed um, having the opportunity to talk to her and learn about her wool. I also talked to her about the Conservancy, and she asked if I was in the passport program and mentioned that I, told, I mentioned to her that Canada, it's not open to Canadians. Um, so I think she was going to take that back as, as well. Uh, so we'll see what happens. Uh, but I, I, I thought it was terrific and it was a, it was a nice surprise because I, I wasn't anticipating that at all. So she was there for a while and then um, we had a, the first night is a, a, a cocktail and which is fantastic because it helps uh, introduce people and, and so that people can get to know each other. But I will tell you that the main thing at a men's knitting retreat is that we, we sit around and knit and we talk and we talk and we talk and we knit and we do some more talking and so it's a very relaxed um, area there's multiple spots that you can take at Easton Mountain to sit around and knit um, so it's relaxing it's beautiful setting um, and it's stress-free it's just it's it, it's truly is a, is a, is a vacation um, it's it's kind of it's, it's interesting for me because it it's incredibly relaxing but I think from a cerebral perspective um, you know, I just, I'm learning so much and, and it's, whether it's about knitting or not, I'm just learning about people, uh, cause we all have different backgrounds. We all have different storylines. And so that's, that's one of the magical things that happened there as well. So I, I absolutely love it. Um, so we had the workshops. I want to talk to you about one of the workshops that I took, which I was so excited about. This is, uh, Franklin Habits class, which is knitting to fit a pet, um, taking the measures. And so I was, I was thinking about, I'm not sure if you can see that or not, but it's basically what the class was about is, is where to take the measurements on, on your pet, 
um, when you're designing a sweater. And Franklin had some awesome sweaters that he was sharing with us. One of them I will post. I, I, I put it on Instagram, but I will also attach it here as well. Uh, and there was a, he did a Wonder Woman um, jacket for his dog, which was amazing. It had the lasso, magic lasso as well. So uh, that was fantastic. But uh, we went over the measurements. Talked, we were talking about the type of fiber that is, is best used for your pet. Uh, it was a great class. And... I guess my greatest takeaway from the class was halfway through the class, I just got incredibly inspired and um, know what I'm going to do next um, with this, with this knowledge that I've gained. I'm going to knit Zan a, for, Christmas, for Christmas, I'm going to knit him a buffalo plaid jacket. Um, oftentimes Zan is, is, people think he's female, um, even though it's obvious, if you look closely, it's obvious that he's not. Um, so I thought I'd butch him up a little bit and put him in a buffalo plaid um, sweater, and, and we'll see how that goes. Anyway, uh, I, I love it. I, I love the fact that you know I got inspiration from that class, and I'm ready to to go in and do something. So that was a great class. One of the most important factors that go along with the men's spring knitting retreat is the sponsorship, and we were very fortunate enough to have um, some great sponsors this year. Because it, it helps, this is a non-profit and or not for, not for profit. Um, so we don't, we're not putting these together to make money. We're there with the objective of educating guys um, or, or bringing guys together to that share a common interest and to help foster relationships and develop um, skills um, with respect to, to knitting or crocheting um, or spinning or weaving. Um, so because it, it's not for profit, you know, we look for any way we can to, to help with uh, to offset costs. And so that's why it's so important to have sponsors here. Um, and so this year we had some great sponsors. We've had, I'll just read them off, uh, Beverly Button and Beverly provided notepads, pens, and small project bags. And then there was Sergey Cotton. Uh, Sergey I had never heard of before. And what an amazing guy. He um, gave keychains and... Um, men's knitting boutique glass, mug, t-shirt, note bags, and then Dragon Fibers really came through and provided yarn. Um, and not only did they provide yarn, they provided um, a, a book as well. And then the Perfect Pool Pearl, um, Doug Morris, who I will put a link to. I'll put a link to all of these. But Doug, uh, fantastic guy. I really I got to know him better during this um, retreat. And he's doing a lot of a lot of great things for um, the community, the knitting community. And so I check out his website, The Purple Pearl. But he partnered with Dragonfly to provide some yarn as well. And then I had mentioned um, Haven Hill Alpaca Farm, um, and they were hosting the road trip. So uh, thank you so much, sponsors. It it um, really means a lot to us because it, it helps offset the price of. Um, and, and provide us with um, things that are tangible, things that we can use uh, for our knitting experience. So here's the bag, and I've got the button, uh, super fine, Christopher Walker. We all had um, super fine. I mentioned that Beverly provided small project bag, so that's a project bag that went into it, and the notepad. Also, here's the Masterpiece Knits by Dragonfly Fibers. And I'm familiar with Dragonfly. Um, they were also on the Christy Glass uh, Maryland Sheep and Wool Festival interview that she did. Um, so I've, I've known them before that, but uh, it was nice to see them get some uh, recognition as well. So thank you so much for, for providing this. It, it's fantastic. It's great. Um, and also, this is from The Perfect Pearl. And I wanted to read this to you as well. Uh, but this is Dragonfly Fibers um, via uh, The Perfect Pearl. Working with natural yarn organizations and manufacturers, we give free knitting classes, yarn, needles, knitting, books, and patterns to anyone that comes to our classes and wants to learn how to knit. Profits uh, will directly help create a healthier community one knitter at a time. 
sign up to our mailing list, theperfectpearl.com, link to our Instagram, The Perfect Pearl, and Twitter, uh, at The Perfect Pearl, um, feeds for updates on our partnerships and our students' progress. So that's fantastic. So thank you. Uh, and I think there's a couple other things. Got uh, little crochet hooks on a key holder, uh, a flashlight. The flashlight's very important because once you finish your class, uh, often when I said, you know, we spend a lot of time talking and knitting, uh, we knit into the wee hours. So it's not unusual to be there at midnight. And then, so when you're walking out of the main lodge, it's dark and so you need a flashlight to see your way back to your room. Some scissors and there was one other thing that I thought was neat. I don't know how this is going to show up on a camera, but um, I had mentioned um, that, uh, where did she go? Oh. I mentioned that Sergey had provided um, a number of things, but this is a um, keychain that he provided, which is really cool. And it has, he's engraved the men's um, knitting retreat on it. So thank you, thank you for that. That was a, that was a nice surprise as well. So again, I just want to thank all of the sponsors for, for this. It's, it, it is a big deal. Um, it really helps. And, um, you know, and if we if you didn't provide these things, it would come out of the the um, any monies that we had that were were going towards the men's knitting retreat. I think one other key aspect that I wanted to share with you is that we also provide scholarships, and um, depending on on the the funds, it could be one or two scholarships. And the scholarships really are, are fantastic. We've had a number of benefactors from the scholarships, so. Um, there's a couple of ways we do that, but one of them at the retreat is we have a table and the attendees will, can bring anything they want, um, knitting related, so it could be yarn. I brought a bunch of yarn uh, from Calvin Boy Knits and um, you can bring books, any, anything that you have that's knitting or crochet related. And you can put it on this table and you can put a price on it and determine how much money goes towards the scholarship. Most, most guys say 100%. So you're there, you can buy a skein of yarn for $5, $10, and that $10 is going to the scholarship fund. And I think it's great. We had three full tables. Uh, I bought a lot of stuff from from those tables this year. And um, I, bought a, I bought two Swifts. Um, did I need two Swifts? Probably not. But I always think, well, what happens if one breaks? Um, so I've got, I've got a bunch of antique Swifts. And but I had to pick these up, so I bought two wooden swifts there. I also bought a ton of fiber, and um, it's right here. I've got uh, this was I was really excited about this uh, caracal, and it's actually from Asia. It, it was a domestic breed from Central Asia, and it has a really wiry feel to it. Um, so I'll be really excited to to see what happens with this. Uh, but that was a, that was a nice find. Uh, John Crane donated all of these, um, and so I'm just more than eager to to help out and and take some off of his hands um, and give money to the to the scholarship fund. This is um, Devon um, Devonshire, I believe. Where did I put my glasses? You're there. This is Devon wool, um, and this is this is really interesting as well. It's it, it's really nice, and I love getting fibers and getting my hands on fibers that are not readily accessible. And then the Swaledale as well. This kind of feels like feels like. Um, stuffing that you would see find in a pillow and then I can't wait to dye this this one actually oh there is a, a name on it um, it doesn't say what it is though oh yes it here here we go I thought I had oh 
it's mohair and palm and Romney. It's mohair and Romney. So that'll be fun to dye. And then lastly, I have, what is this one? The Rare Hard Workshop. The, when, when you purchase these things, there's a label on them and it explains what it is. And, um, and then you rip the label off and with your money you hand that to, to Joe so I can keep track of everything. So I did that, but I did not write down um, what this was. So I will have to check with John Crane and find out. But it's nice. Um, so looking forward to using that in some capacity. Well, and then I thought I was done. And I noticed that there was a project bag. And it was actually my favorite project bag. Um, so Bill Dristis makes these and they sell out as soon as he puts them on the table. And so I was lucky enough, fortunate enough to um, walk over right at the right time. This was the last bag on the table and pick it up. To me, this reminds me of the 70s. And so that's why I love it so much. And Bill's company is Visual Verve. And um, so we're really you know, encouraging Bill to to pump out more of these and, and make them available um, and get a website up because they're they're fantastic. They're really, really nice and they're well made. He did a phenomenal job on it. Bill's also a great knitter as well. But he did a terrific job on this, so thank you, Bill, for that. Um, I have a number of Bill bags uh, or visual Verve bags, and so I use them on my projects. Uh, but this is great, so, so good job. So that pretty much does it with respect to the men's knitting retreat. Um, you know, again, a lot of knitting, not a, a lot of conversations going on. Um, and you get paired up in, with your roommates as well. Just wanted to comment on that. I was fortunate enough to be paired up with uh, Franklin Habit, and I, which is funny because I had, um, took his class in, in January. And I wouldn't say that I know or knew Franklin well, um, but I always found him very interesting. He's articulate, uh, witty, and um, such a such a fantastic guy. I got to know him over the last few days, and uh, what an amazing guy. So I was very fortunate. I think that was one of the highlights as well for me is sharing a room with with Franklin. We had a lot of laughs. That's I guess that's the other thing that I left out. There are we laugh a lot um, over the over the four days. So uh, so that's fun. Uh, but it, what a community! What a, what a sense of community! Um, you can just tell that um, this is needed, and and there's a demand for it because a lot of groups like this are popping up. It doesn't have to necessarily be a retreat, but Lupin Dudes, for example, um, you know we've got that's uh, Greg Sabata has set that up in Chicago, um, and we have. Um, Doug Morris in Palm Springs, who set up a group. There's groups all over the place in San Francisco, um, New York. There's a, there's a bunch in New York, um, which I've talked about in prior episodes. So there's definitely a, a demand for it, but uh, kudos to you guys for taking the initiative and setting it up. So that was the men's knitting retreat. So I, I was planning on leaving right after breakfast, but couldn't take tear myself away. So I stayed until lunch and I'm glad I did uh, to get more time in uh, with the group. Uh, and when I was leaving, I decided not to take the turnpike uh, and because basically here's my map again, my, my hand map. But if this is the cabin and this is Easton Mountain, you can take uh, highways all the way down and across. This would be the turnpike and then back up. Um, but there is a country roads and you can actually go from point A to point B um, through country roads. And um, time wise, it says it's like five or 10 minutes faster. Uh, but if you get stuck behind a tractor or other things, other rural equipment, you know, can take take longer than that. But it, I, it actually was half an hour faster going that way. But the interesting part was that I was on my way back, and I love listening to radio when I'm 
or the radio when I'm traveling because I like hearing local radio stations and what they're talking about and, and, and whatnot. And so uh, three times when I was in the car, uh, public bulletin came on and said that there's a severe warning, uh, weather warning in the area in the Oneida County, um, which I had no idea where that was, um, and that there were 60 mile an hour winds coming down and there was going to be hail. They'll definitely do damage to the car, to your car, um, break glass, um, you know, damage the metal on your car or aluminum, and, uh, and to take cover and go into the basement if you can. And so I'm sitting here looking around. Um, I was still fairly high up, so I could see, um, I had a great visual in terms of where I thought the form, the um, thunderstorms could be. Couldn't see anything for a while. And then 15 minutes later, another bulletin came on. And it, I, I love the bulletins. They were great. They basically um, spoke to the severity of the thunderstorm, um, spoke specifically to the impact and made it um, real in terms of you know what the damage was so you could really get an appreciation of what the damage could be although i didn't listen to it i mean i easily could have pulled over to the side of the road tried to figure out where i am um, on my map but i just kept driving and then i spotted it um i could spot i could see the where it was traveling and fortunately the route that i took i, I just missed it and i missed the tail end of it by about five minutes i did get a little sprinkling but not much but i was fortunate enough to miss it so I'm on my way up to the border. I got there a lot faster than I had anticipated. And I get to the border guard and he looks at me and he said, do you have anything to declare? And whenever I hear that, I always think about the famous Oscar Wilde quote. Um, and it always goes in, in my mind, just my genius. Um, anyway, I, I said, I've got uh, some, a few skeins of yarn, I told him where I was. Uh, so I've got a few skeins of yarn and some roving. And so he looks at me and he said, do you have any alpaca? And I said, yeah, I've got two skeins of alpaca. And so he said, well, I love alpaca yarn. And he went on to tell me about why he loves alpaca yarn and that he grew up um, just down the road from an alpaca farm. And then he wished me back into Canada and said, have a great day. And I, I just thought that was amazing. Uh, so yeah, I was definitely happy to be, be in Canada. That's, that was great, a great entry. Um, it was, it was, I, I couldn't believe it either. I wish I had, it. I wish I had recorded it. Uh, but a similar thing happened to me last year when I crossed the border. There was a French Canadian guy who was there and he asked me where I was and I said a men's knitting retreat. And so he started asking me a bunch of questions and he asked me what I knit and what stitches I use. And he was asking me very specific questions. And so I'm starting to think now maybe there, there is a, a knitting group amongst the Canadian um, Border Patrol um, guys. Maybe they have their own knitting group uh, because it seems like they, they're definitely knowledgeable in, in that area. So anyway, it, it, was, it was a great re-entry back, in, back into Canada. I would mentioned earlier that I was planning on going to the retreat um, on Tuesday and I didn't make it because I had spent most of the day in an art gallery. I was working on an installation. Um, so I finished a piece and it is about six feet by seven feet. And it took me three and a half hours to install it because part I had to knit part of it while I was there. And it's basically um, a, an exhibit that is going on to celebrate uh, fiber. And it's the same weekend as the uh, Prince, Prince Edward County Fiber Festival, which is happening next weekend. Um, I'm one of the sponsors of that and of the fiber festival and um, i'm also teaching as well i'm teaching an indigo class and i'm giving a talk on the upper canada fiber shed so i'm looking forward to it it's going to be a busy weekend but i am also I'm participating in this exhibit this is the second exhibit at this gallery particular gallery that i participated in and uh, the piece that i was working on is called acknowledge and i mentioned it's six feet by seven feet um, and it was very important for me to strap it to the pipe. I wanted to secure myself or secure the piece to um, the physical building. Because, uh, and it was interesting because the owner of the gallery said, well, I'm, there's gonna be a lot of people that wanna buy this. And I said, well, how are they gonna buy it? It's, it's secure to the pipe. And so he was asking me if I could jerry-rig it in a way that um, we could 
make it sellable. And I said, well, to me, it's more important that it's fastened to the building. So I'll let you figure that out or I'm happy to, if, if that um, happens, I'm happy to solve that. So do what you want with it, but this is the purpose of the piece. And it, it's called Acknowledge. Um, and, and the reason that I, I, it was important to me to be a part, to have it attached to the, to the actual gallery is because you know, there's been a lot of talk around um, racism, sexism, ageism, uh, homophobia in, in the last uh, 12 months, even, even more than that. And um, not just in, in our community or knitting community, crochet community, um, but also we're seeing it politically as well. Um, I don't have to say anything to, to those in the United States, but also here in Canada, um, those in Alberta, um, recently elected Premier, and then in Ontario as well, um, we're definitely um, seeing some challenges in, in the Premier that we just elected who is um, homophobic and, um, you know, it's having an impact on, on, he's definitely having an impact on, um, on, on citizens of, of the province. Um, you know, pulling back on uh, sex education in, in schools, um, you know, whereby, you know, anything that's LGBT related is excluded um, in itself could be deemed as, as homophobic, but at least they're not, it, it's not recognized. And so it was important for me to say, you know, here I am, um, acknowledge me. And, and, and that's why I wanted to fasten the piece to the, um, to the actual gallery. Um, and again, speaking to ageism, sexism, uh, racism, uh, because it, there's too many stories that are coming through, um, whereby they're just we're just not acknowledged, and so it was important to to have that piece speak speak to that. So that's where that came from. Um, I, what I'll do is I, I'm going to the opening next week, and uh, there'll be interviews there. So we'll talk about that. But it, it's I'm heading into a very busy uh, next uh, couple of week, a uh, couple of months actually. Uh, which which is fantastic. It's it's exciting. I've got two radio interviews uh, lined up next week uh, to kick off the uh, fiber season, and um, I mentioned that I'm teaching at the Prince Edward County Fiber Festival. Um, so I encourage anyone to who wants to go go. Um, Prince Edward County is absolutely stunning. It's wine country now. They've got uh, microbreweries. There's sand dunes, waterfalls. It's just absolutely a phenomenal place. Great place to visit. And then uh, if you are going there, make sure that you go to Maison uh, de Pois uh, Gallery because uh, they've got some fantastic artists from New York, Toronto. I think there are some from Europe as well. They've always got a, a great stable of artists. It's a fantastic gallery. And then after that, um, in two weeks, I will be up in the Kawartha area in Fenlon Falls for the Kawartha uh, Arts and Fiber Festival. I went there last year and absolutely loved it. And it's actually one town over from where my mother grew up in Bob Cajun. So uh, there's a sentimental sentimental um, factor in there as well. But it's also going to be the first time that I'm there as a vendor. I'm teaching a, a yarn dyeing class. I'm giving a lecture on um, the history of knitting in Canada, but I'm also a vendor as well. And so it's impossible for me to do all three. And so the kids are coming up and they're gonna help me uh, vend. So that's great. So I've been educating them on the products and on the dye process. My daughter's helped me with it as well. Because it, it, it's, I, there's nothing worse than walking into a vendor asking questions and they have no idea. So I can guarantee you that when you walk into uh, my space, uh, the Cabin Boy Knits space, that you will have knowledgeable staff there, or they better be, or, or, or let me know if they're not anyway. Um, but they will be. They'll, be, they'll be well prepped for that. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, and then I'm teaching again uh, the week after that at, on Amherst Island at Topsy Farms. And I love this place. Uh, Topsy Farms is great. They've always got really interesting classes going on. So I'd encourage you to check out their website. They've got so many, so many amazing things going on. And everything from building stone fences um, to, um, to yarn dyeing um, and, and whatnot. So we're going to be exploring the area, gathering um, either flowers or, or other things to dye, and we'll, and we'll be dyeing right on the right on the farm. So that's I'm looking forward to that. And then August first to fourth, I have the men's spring knitting retreat happening at the cabin. Um, and that filled up, it, I'm not completely full yet, I've got a couple of spaces left, 
but I was, I was shocked at how quickly that, that started to fill up. So I think there's just a couple of spaces left. So if you're interested in that, I will have details um, and where you can go and click and, and, and find out more information. Um, and then after that, in August, I am teaching at Twist. Uh, and I'm, I love Twist. Twist is, I went there for the first time last year, fell in love with the festival, and I just love Quebec to be um, as well. And so in this class, or in this, I'll be teaching four classes. I'll be teaching a natural dye class, um, ornamental Christmas ball class, and brioche, and also mosaic knitting. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, it, it's going to be a, a lot of fun. Um, I know some of the vendors that are going to be there as well. Um, and the organizers, everybody, it's, I can tell you, I can guarantee you, it's it's going to be a lot of fun. So if you've never been to Twist before, check it out. It is Canada's largest festival. Um, so I encourage you to do that as well. As we get closer to each festival, I will give you more information about each one because they're really, really worth checking out. Um, the, the, all three of them that I've mentioned, I wouldn't mention them on this um, wool cast if I, if I wasn't 100% behind them. So I... So I strongly recommend them and I will give you more information as we go on. So that's it in terms of stuff going on in my world. I, d I also have to get my yarn shop set up. Um, I keep um, getting, I guess, um, I'm not focused on it. I think that's part of the problem. So I've committed to July now to get the, the online store set up. Um, just some of the dyeing that I've been doing over the last little while, I've got some yarn hanging here there's been doing as i think you've seen in other episodes been doing the uh indigo which i love doing um i've also got the this is the cochinelle that i was dying um and then over here we've got brazil wood um uh, indigo and cochinelle and then this is marigold and an indigo so lots of dyeing going on um, also, one thing I wanted to mention was in terms of being a vendor for the first time, um, you know, I just kind of felt like I was blind in terms of you know, what I need to do, how I need to set up. And so I reached out to the community, the vendor community of knitters and asked them, you know, how much yarn should I produce? You know, how should I, I, I had an idea of how I wanted to set the place up, but you know, what do I need to know? Um, what do I need to look out for? And they've been fantastic. I even had, um, one person um, offer to give me her um, her whole setup because she's not going to be there and 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 which is um, incredibly nice so the, you guys have been amazing and um, there's just some, such a sense of community uh, amongst the vendors as well I mean we're all selling similar pro similar products and um, I'm always amazed at uh, how cooperative and friendly you are to one another so I appreciate that so that's it for this episode. I will tell you, you know, I always like to end it with what's making me happy. Um, and this one is the men's knitting retreat that, you know, I, I was telling someone that when I was a kid, you know, the excitement that you feel before you wake up in the morning for Christmas. Well, that's the excitement that I feel before I go to the, the men's knitting retreat. So um, that's definitely what's making me happy. So I wish everyone well. Um, have a great week and I will talk to you soon. Take care. Bye bye.